Hi, my name is Patrick and welcome to another stream where we're going to be doing some soldering work. And today we are going to be working on this kit that I have here, which is an, another Elearntronics uh, kit that is going to be on some transistor work. And in addition to the transistor work on this, we're going to be uh, essentially seeing how some logic gates work. We're going to build some really basic logic gates and logic gates are the things that allow you to basically make a computer. It's what you have inside of your computer. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this open and get started on this fun little kit. I hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever it is in the world that you are. Okay, we got that all set. And let's see what we got here. We got a lot of resistors. Uh, we've got our logic board, which is pretty big. Ooh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of soldering on this one. <laughs> and then, of course, our handy-dandy, come on, little resistor guide. So, set this aside. And let's go ahead and open our packet here. There's going to be a lot of logic going on here. All right. And, wow, yeah, okay, I'm just going to pour this out because I don't think there's going to be a clean way for me to take this out of the... The bag, really? Come on. There we go. Okay. All right, we've got that all sorted. Uh, we've got a bunch of resistors here. And they are different resistors. We've got a lot of one type and a lot of another type. It's two different sets of resistors, so one's probably that. We've got all of our transistors here. And transistors are unique. Um, they are something that allows you to essentially, by passing power through the one part, it will allow power to flow through another part. Otherwise, if no power is passing in, no power comes out. And it's kind of a weird uh, electrical thing, but it, it's that's how most electronics, uh, and especially computers, work. We've got our power adapter, which we won't really need. And then we've got a number of LEDs, which I'm just gonna drop in here. Uh, we will be doing those in a second, most likely, or third. We've got our dipole. We've got our parts for the screws, for the board. And then, hold on, okay. Let's go get our LEDs. And then we've got two push button switches we're going to throw right here and then we've got our on off switch and our transistors of course so uh, we're just going to set the transistors over here on the side I think uh, you know what I might as well just take these all and uh, let's see if I can't just easily break these open here real quick no not so much You would think there would be an easy way. Okay, yeah, they do just kind of pull out. Okay, so I'm just gonna throw all the transistors in here really quick so that I have them on hand. All transistors, well, all of these transistors, I should say, are the same. There's no difference between any of them. Uh, but it is important to know what type of transistor it is. And there are two types of transistors. There's NPN transistors and PNP transistors. And it has to do with the type of um, chemical makeup of the actual transistor itself. And we don't, um, I don't know, honestly, what kind of transistors these are, specifically. Uh, I suppose I could look it up if the part number is on there. Let me just pull all these out and get them ready to go. Okay. So as usual, when we start on one of these projects, the first thing we're gonna do is all the resistors. Uh, and the resistors are necessary to make sure that we don't feed too much power through our components. They slow down the flow of electricity through them, kind of like a valve or a, a um, some sort of a tool uh, for flowing water. So we've got our handy dandy there. So let's go ahead and take a look at what type of resistors we have. Um, and according to this, we've got, let me get my magnifying glass here so I can actually read this without killing my eyes. That might be useful. 
And actually, let's turn this around that way, because that's the way it's supposed to kind of work. There we go. All right. And so on this little guy, we have what looks to be a yellow, purple, and brown. So yellow, according to my handy dandy little card here, is a four. The purple or violet, more likely, is a seven. And the brown um, indicates that we're times 10. So 47 times 10, 470 ohms, with an impedance of 5%. Uh, silver, is that silver? Oh, these have like a 0 0.05, so these are way more accurate on there. Let's go ahead and work on this. Hello there, working on another soldering project today. So we'll go ahead and do all the 470 ohm resistors first, just so we don't have to get confused between uh, which ones we're working on as we work on them. And they're gonna go into our board in a number of marked places, so we'll just do these one by one. I think we'll do across the top first, because that'll probably be easiest. And just to make sure I'm reading this in the correct direction, Yep, that looks right. Okay, so I'll take this and we'll bend the leads like so. And that looks good. And then we'll go ahead and put it into our board here, like so. And then we'll bend the back so that it's easy and not going to fall out. Okay, so first uh, resistor in, and we'll just keep doing these. Okay. That yellow on top, and I think that's gold. And I can't, I don't think that there's another band there. These, these resistors are a little hard to read, to be honest, but Doing the best I can. All right. And I think the 470 ohm resistor specifically is for the uh, it's for the LED power. Is a guess. It's an educated guess because it seems like having a 10k ohm resistor would be, or yeah, a little much for just an LED. It wouldn't be very bright. If we had a 10k ohm resistor. All right. So, yep, yellow on top, yellow, violet, brown. All right. So we got two of these. So we'll go. Um, let's let's do all the ones that are across the top first here. And somebody commented on YouTube recently, and thank you so much for that comment, that if there was a way that I could get closer to this, and unfortunately I don't have like a way to mount a camera directly above the work. I wish I did. Um, and that's something that I hope to be able to do in the future. But right now I, I unfortunately just don't have the resources uh, to mount a camera on top of things, like uh, up here or something like that, unfortunately. So... We just have to make do with this for the time being, unfortunately. Okay, we should be all set there. Let's go ahead and scoot this forward. And we'll go ahead and get our soldering iron on and heating up really quick here. It takes a moment to boot up and then turn on and then get to heat. And we are soldering at 315 degrees Celsius. Oh, I almost lost a LED here. Good thing I saw that. There we go. All right, that is indicative that our soldering iron is heated up. So let's go ahead and turn our fan on here. And let's go ahead and pretend the soldering iron for our start for the day. Get nice and happy. Okay, that looks nice and shiny. 
So let's go ahead and solder. I could really use a roll for this thing so that I don't have to tug so much when I am soldering. There we go, okay. Okay, looks good for our first set of work there. So let me just take a quick look here and make sure it all looks good. Yeah, that looks nice and happy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nicely soldered on. Okay, we'll go ahead and clip that. These are handy dandy clippers here. And again, I always hold on to the um, leads that I clip because you never know when having uh, extra leads around, maybe you just need a little short piece of metal you need to connect something. It'll do the job just fine. Okay, let's get the next set of resistors in. Oops. Okay. All right. Left to right, 470 ohm resistors. We've got two of these. Left and right, and they are very close to each other. Okay. Pardon the background noise there. I think that's good. That's the only 470s I see up the rest are 10K. So we'll go ahead and do these two really quick. Oops, come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, perfect. Okay. Inspect the work. If it looks happy, then we're good. And it looks very happy. So we should be good. Yeah. Cool. OK. 
Okay. Snip these leads. Okay. Now we have a number of 470 ohm resistors down on the bottom part. So let's go ahead and get those in. And then we can get soldering on those. And with resistors, as I have said before, it doesn't matter what direction you put them in. I just like to keep them in the same orientation uh, for, for ease of uh, reading later on. So I don't have to be like, is this upside down? What am I doing? It's just easier. Okay. And this one has another one right underneath it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one in and I'm gonna solder it in place. And then I'm gonna solder the next one after that. So it's a little easier. Okay, that's 470, 470. There's two right there, which I need to keep in mind. They're very close to each other. Okay. Right, we got that one in. Let's do this next one here. And I, maybe I can give you a close up somehow. I wish that I was able to zoom in more than I am. Maybe I can figure out a way to do that. Um, okay. If anything, I can always hold this up to the camera. And you can take a look. You can see the work being done and the printing on the board. So we just gotta put a few more resistors in here. It's just four of these left. So put two in and then we'll solder and then we'll do the last two because they're very close to the other ones. That XNOR circuit looks complicated. I hope I, I may try and dig up some diagrams of these circuits that kind of explain how they work. Um, when I did my uh, one of my classes in undergrad, it was on this, this kind of thing. Um, sorry, I'm actually going to turn this around because I was having a hard time doing it the other way. I kind of like this orientation for the helping, helping hands better. Um, and so we would design um, and or and XNOR circuits from scratch uh, using a program. Unfortunately, that program, I don't remember the name of. It's been, you know, decades. But it was, it was fun. It was one of my favorite classes that I took in undergrad. Um, okay, I think we're all set there. Let me get a good amount of this ready to go so that we can just get started. Get our fan on. And let's do some soldering. So when soldering, from what I've learned, you just hold it to the pad for a couple seconds. The pad is the, the actual circuit here, or the, the um, board, and then the lead is the thing sticking out. So 
you only hold it there for a few seconds. You don't need to hold it there for very long, just enough so that the heat transfers from the iron to the two things, and you want to touch both. And then you feed the solder to the objects you're heating, not to the soldering iron itself. Um, and the reason is, is that this creates a chemical bond between the metals, which is how soldering works. And that creates the, the solid connectedness that you're, that you're seeing here. So we want to make sure that we are creating that chemical bond with the objects and not just heating up solder with the soldering iron, because that kind of did, wouldn't really do the job. So, okay, that's nice and good now. Uh, let's go do this one. Okay, that's good. And the reason I use this fan is because the fumes from this, well, not necessarily, like, dangerous per se, it's still just not a good idea to inhale them over a long period of time, so, you know, just being safe. Okay. Oops. Just a few more of these. Oh, oh, hold on. Got a weird angle going with my solder there. It's not going the direction I want it to. There we go. I see your comment just a second and I will reply. Uh, nether the wormhole. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, the solder will flow towards the heat, so if you touch the solder to the iron, sometimes it can be challenging to get it off the iron and onto the joint. That is absolutely right, and my, that, my experience. Now, I want to be clear, I don't have any formal training on this. This is all self taught. I've just learned from watching videos and other people. Um, but yeah, my understanding is, is you want the heat to flow into the components and then you want to touch the solder to the components so that they properly bind together. Boom. Okay, we're done with that part. And also, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for stopping by. Okay, so we're good on all of those. Let's take a look at the work and make sure we didn't get any, like, oh, hold on. My overhead tends to pop off every now and then. Uh, yeah, those all look good. That looks nice and clean. We got some nice little mounds going. No problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and clip these leads. And then we can put our last two 470 ohm resistors in. Um, the, I am using, um, the solder itself has flux in it. It is uh, fluxed solder, if that's the correct way to say it. Um, but I do have, uh, in case I need it, some liquid flux. I have a flux pen. And then I also have some flux paste uh, in case I need it. Um, but currently I am, I am just, there's enough in the solder itself. Yeah, rosin core solder, exactly. I knew there was a word for it. I just didn't remember the word. Hold on, I'm going to clip this a little closer. There we go. All right. And we're just going to clip these leads off. Do you do a lot of solder work? I'm presuming you do, because it sounds like you know what you're talking about. Okay. I have just been doing this for, uh, I don't know, I would say maybe 20 hours at most, so not a lot. Uh, mostly just assembling little kits to learn how to solder. And I have a bigger project that I'm taking on, which is a Bluetooth speaker kit, um, which I will be starting next spring. Not sure if I'm going to stream that one or not, because it's rather involved. I might just record it and post the video instead. 
Both are fine. I prefer fluxing first before soldering rather than at the same time. Got it. Is there any appreciable difference to that or is it really just a personal preference kind of thing? I guess it might make the pad take wick the solder a bit better or something. I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> About 15 years of soldering experience started when you were a teenager. Nice. It is always great, and it's something that I've really enjoyed learning. Oh, that could be cut a little more flush. Yeah, my, my snips aren't very flush here. <laughs> I'm going to go back and re-snip this later. I don't think it's going to cause any problems because uh, it's not intruding on any other pads except for those two. I'm going to just set this down here and cut these a little more flush now that I can see. They're not really as flush as I'd like them to be. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right, so we just have to get the last two resistors in uh, really quick. Hmm. Eventually, I'd like to get to a point where I design my own little projects. Um, I also have some Arduino boards and a Raspberry Pi. And it'd be fun to construct some things uh, I design my own circuits, but I'm not not quite at that level of, um, of of capability yet. Got a little ways to go before I can get to that. Okay, let's see here. Okay, get that one in. Nice and flush, perfect. And then we've got it looks like maybe 15 or 20 10 k ohm resistors to throw on here. It's a lot. This is a very densely populated board. This is going to be. Nothing compared to the other project, which is all surface mount components, and I'm, I'm a little nervous, to be honest, about that one. That one I will be pre-fluxing because, uh, and pre-tinning everything, because when it comes to surface mount, that seems like something you, you don't really want sliding around very long when you're trying to work on it. So, all right, let's flip this around and get these last four leads soldered. Okay, great. Okay, on we go. Hmm. Hold on just a second on this one. That looks really close. So I'm going to take another quick look at this just to see exactly how close it is because I don't want to have those components. Yeah, they're nearly touching there. Mm. I think I'm going to bend this lead this way just so it doesn't end up intruding on that one because they're very, very close to each other. Okay. And sorry, I do see your comments just a moment and I will look at them. Okay. Yes, flux is to remove the oxidation layer so that the solder adheres better. Having the solder, having it in the solder can sometimes have the solder get into the joint before the flux gets to it, or the flux not covering the whole joint before the solder adheres. Ah, I prefer fluxing beforehand to ensure the flux covers everything it needs to before introducing solder. That makes sense. Okay, I understand that. Uh, SMD isn't that much harder. You need a good pair of tweezers. Fortunately, I have um, multiple sets of tweezers ready to go, so I should be... Uh, all set in that uh, regard, I hope. <laughs> but yes, I, ha I do have a good tweezer set on hand, um, so I should be prepared for when I get to that part. And my my little um, mat here has a nice little numbered grid that I can use to keep track of all the components, which are really, really tiny. That's another thing that I'm a little nervous about is how small everything is and being able to keep track of it. But move slow, you know, do one part at a time, solder all those parts, then move on. And it should be okay. Let's go ahead and heat this up here. Line it up, solder one side, then push down with the tweezers while reheating the same side for a moment. Make it flush, then simply solder the other side. Oh, okay. Uh, let's go about this, this angle here. Come on. 
Oh, that, that wasn't a good joint at all. That only hit the iron. There we go. That's much better. Okay. So one thing I was reading suggested that you um, pre-tin all the, all the pads if you can. Uh, and that can help with, um, with getting it on there because then you don't need to worry about introducing the solder. It's already on the thing. You just hold the component down and boom, you're good to go. Okay, yeah, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and clip these. That one looks like a little, hold on a second. This one looks suspicious. Yeah, I might introduce a little more flux to that one. It didn't cover the whole whole hole on some of these actually. Now that I'm looking a little closer, I'm gonna resolder a few of these off, uh, items just to, just to make sure it's nice and on there, really. Okay, there we go. Yeah, same thing here. You can, I would only preach in one of the pads. It would be difficult if you do both. Hard to get the component flush if there's a cold. Yeah, got it. So one side, then the other. That makes sense. Uh, okay, I think that there's... Yeah, that's better. Okay. Sorry, I saw those two, and I'm like, I need to look at all of these now, because I want to make sure I didn't, like, only half do this on any of them. Uh, yeah, those look okay. Those look okay. Okay, cool. We can snip those. I feel confident in how those look. Okay, let's go ahead and snip this. And the last one here. Okay, now we're done with the 470 ohm. To add on to doing your own projects, they're fun. I've designed my own number of um, number pad PCB and then revision. Oh, nice. And to make it wireless. Nice. Uh, one thing I want to mess with is uh, light strips in clothing. So a little Arduino board, a small power source, and then, um, you know, light up clothing. I think that would be pretty fun to do. Okay, so we're done with the first set of all the 470 uh, ohm resistors. So that's all set. And we're going to move on now to the um, 10k ohm resistors of which there are a large number. <laughs> so we're gonna have some time working on this. Okay, and I'm just gonna verify the resistance on these just to make sure I calculate it correctly. It looks like the color bands are brown, black, and brown is one I know, black is zero, and then there's an orange, uh, which means multiply that by a thousand. So 10 times a thousand is 10,000. And then it has a gold uh, band, which implies that the plus or five minus, uh, plus or minus five percent. Will this be a functional board when it's done or it's just a practice? This is a functional toolkit. Um, and I have a number of them that I have worked on, uh, which I, I have kind of floating around here. Uh, this board you hook up and it shows how things work in parallel versus series. Um, and then I've got one for capacitance, one that shows how resistance works among a scale of different resistor strengths. Uh, so they all actually do something. Um, and at the same time, you know, I'm practicing my soldering. So it's, it's they're basically fun little learn how to solder and learn how electronics work at the same time uh, kits. I've also done a, just a more basic little LED light boards and then one that has um, some pentiometers to it connected to a multicolor LED and so you can change the color 
on the LED uh, by turning the, pen, uh, turning the pots higher or lower and increasing the amount of electricity going to that particular uh, LED inside the multicolor LED. So you can do multiple colors, it's kind of fun. And this is all, like I said, to build myself up to the big project, which is the, um, the Bluetooth speaker kit. And then after that, uh, like I said, I'm gonna try and do some Arduino stuff, um, do some fun little circuit designs. One of the kits I actually have here, which is a multiplexer, will interface with an Arduino, and you can essentially turn off sets of LEDs, and I wanna see if I can get text to scroll or to show up on it in different letters. It's only a four by four, so it's not very um, dense in terms of the lettering, but I think I can do really basic lettering with it. Awesome, definitely way to go. I just like the boards that are just practicing the solder but don't do anything. Yeah, I agree, I wouldn't want to do that. I did consider getting one only to practice uh, surface mount soldering, because I'm so new to it and I don't wanna screw up on the actual kit when I do it. Um, so that is that is one thing I've considered uh, is getting one that's just surface mount practice. Um, but again, you're kind of wasting components, right? So maybe I can find something that lets me practice SMD. But I think, uh, I think that I feel fairly confident um, how I'm doing now and how that will go. And I've got, you know, if I mess up, that's okay. Mistakes are allowed uh, and encouraged, in fact. So if I do mess up, I've got my soldering braid here and I can desolder stuff and I can start over. You know, it's okay to make mistakes. You already have good technique. Well, thank you so much for confirming that. I don't really have a lot of feedback, but yeah, like I said, I do have some desoldering braid here in case I need it. Um, to, if I mess something up or need to make changes. All right. I did have, um, when, I, when I first started off, I did have a really interesting problem, which was it seemed like whenever I was soldering, it was taking forever for any of my components to heat up. Um, I would sit there and I would count like 10, maybe 12 seconds and thing, the solder just wasn't flowing and then it would finally work. And I'm like, wow, this seems really strange. And so after I did those initial kits, um, the first two, three, two, two practice kits, no, three practice kits, because I do have one other kit, which I can pull over here and show you in a few. And that's the most complex one I've done so far. Um, I did some research online. I was like, why is my soldering iron not doing what it's supposed to? And people are like, by the way, you're supposed to calibrate your soldering iron after you get it. I'm kind of like, oh, uh-oh, calibration, right? Braid is the way to go. Soldier suckers suck, but not in the good way. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I feel a little more comfortable with braid personally. Um, okay, so we've got those four leads on. Let's go ahead and just get these soldered down and get them out of the way. Um, let me grab this other kit over here real quick. Here we go. So this one is the most complex thing I've done. Um, and again, it's just an off the shelf kind of thing. Um, it's got some resistors, it's got some diodes, uh, of course, a bunch of LEDs, uh, and then three little uh, um, processors, or not processors, uh, they're not transistors, what would I call them? Um, offsets, maybe? Um, anyway, when you apply power to it, it turns on, uh, and then these flash, and when you hold down the button, it gives you basically what are two six-sided dice, ICs, integrated circuits, thank you. I knew the word, just wasn't coming to my head. So, um, yeah, this was the most fun I've done, and then it has a small little ceramic uh, capacitor there. Uh, and it works. The problem is, is that it's really annoying to disconnect the battery from it, so I just leave it disconnected. Um, I may try and redo this part up here at some point to put this nice, um, they have these really nice little plugs that come with these kits that make it so you can easily disconnect and reconnect power to them. So I may try and modify this to see if I can do that at some point. Um, but for now, yeah, that's, that's the most complex thing that I've done. And it's kind of a mess on the back. I haven't taken the time to clean up the solder paste yet. I have a lot of rosin all over it because I was still learning at the time and, and trying to see if I could just do things. So it's a gigantic mess, but I do have some uh, IPA. I just haven't taken the time to clean it up yet. Barrel connectors, yes, exactly. Um, so I'd like to replace the direct connector with a barrel connector so I can more easily um, plug things in and out, which is what all these projects have with a nice little, I just have my battery and it's not sucking power and gonna go to waste and I can unplug and plug it into any one of these. It's interchangeable, which is in my opinion, the way things should be. Okay, let's go ahead and do these really quick.
Okay. Another thing I found while working on this is that, um, you know, everybody's really supportive. Uh, nobody's like, oh my gosh, you're terrible at this or anything like that. Everyone who stopped by has been really nice and, um, and been like, no, you're doing, you're doing a good job. Here's some things you might consider. I did ask some questions when I was trying to figure out why my soldering iron wasn't doing what it was supposed to. Um, and then somebody's like, have you calibrated it? And I'm like, oh, no, that's, that's a thing. I didn't know that. Hold on, this is, there we go. You're supposed to calibrate these things? What? Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> the more makers, the better. I absolutely 100% agree. And that's one of the reasons I got into this is I was really liking the maker culture. Uh, and I wanted to learn how to do this kind of stuff. My, my degrees are actually in computer science, so I know the programming side extremely well. Um, that's what my master's is in, and I've done a lot of virtual reality work. But I wanted to pick up more of the actual, you know, down to the, the electronics type, type of stuff. Which is what this kit I'm building is, actually. It's a kit that's supposed to teach logic gates. So we're going to... When we build this kit and when it's done, we'll be able to see how basic logic gates function using all the transistors and resistors and everything that I've got floating around here. I probably shouldn't be gesturing with a hot soldering iron. Not the smartest thing in the world to be doing. Okay, there we go. And if you don't mind me asking, where in the world are you watching from? I'm always curious how people find my content and stop by the channel. Look into getting the Penicil. USB-C soldering iron heats up in like six seconds. It's smart, has an accelerometer, shuts off if you put it down. Oh, okay. Um, this soldering iron I didn't buy. It was a gift from some friends who uh, knew that I was interested in learning about this kind of stuff. So. It's been a really good starter. It's a, it's a cheap, um, I don't even know what the, the name, Kesker. So it's, it works. It did take some calibrating, like I said, but I have a, um, a tool for, for checking the temperature calibration now, fortunately. But initially, I did not. Um, so it does the work. Cowboy Town. <laughs> well, I uh, live in Hawaii, uh, and that's where I've lived most of my life. And soldering stuff is kind of difficult to get here. Pronounced pine, pencil, like pencil, but pine instead of pen. Got it. Thank you for the correction. And it is actually pretty hot out here today. Uh, Come on. There we go. Okay, we're good now. Houston, Texas. Nice. I have some friends out there in Austin. And had some family out there, but I think they have, have since moved uh, to another place. Okay, just double checking my work here. All of those look clean, nice coverage on the pads, no issues, no cold joints going on. Okay, let's go ahead and clip it. Go slow, go steady, do it right, fix problems if they come up. Not in a huge rush here. But yes, the, the soldering iron has performed way better ever since I calibrated it, because it was off by a good, like, 50 to 75 centigrade. And so, it's just taking forever to heat anything up. Like, why is this so terrible? Well, there's a reason for that. And it's a very good reason. Okay, there we go. Whoops, actually dropped that one. Okay. I'll pick that up in a minute. There's no rush. Ow, careful. Okay. So typically, I was able, I've been able to get through about two of these projects per night, but this one's a little longer just because of the amount of soldering that needs to be done. And the, the, once, once the transistors go in, this is going to be long. So hopefully I'll be able to do this in the time allotted. If I'm not, 
then I will definitely continue and finish it uh, next week and we'll combine the videos. All right. That is not touching, so we're good there. Perfect, awesome. It looks like there's a little bit of, a little splash of solder that got on that. Okay, whatever, it should not be an issue. All right, next 10K resistors, let's go. So yes, the reason that I'm using the tools that I have is because many of them were gifted to me. Um, but I think that if I had the resources, I would probably get some other stuff in the future. Okay, here we go. Let me just do these across the top here to start. And we'll just do all the vertical facing ones. Just to make it easy. Another thing I'm interested in doing is um, a weather station of some type, uh, some sort of a community weather. You can set up your own thing and then it becomes available for other people to check what's going on. So it'd be cool if I were to hook up, you know, weather sensors, temperature, some sort of water sensor to get humidity, all that kind of stuff. And then set it up outside and, you know, internet connect it and make it so you get uh, weather data. It'd be really fun to build something like that, I think. Uh, one of the problems that I have with a lot of the um, off-the-shelf, well, not off-the-shelf, the, a lot of the commercial stuff that you can buy these days is that it's all, you know, someone's connecting data, collecting data on you, and it's got all this extra junk that you don't want, and then they're advertising, and yada, yada. No, I just want a simple little thing I can do myself, and when I'm ready, I'll take a look, and you don't need to, to know what I've been doing. Thank you. I'm comfortable. All right. So that's going to be yeah, right there. Okay. Doing all these close together ones first so that they're out of the way. One, two, three, four. I think that's good. Do I need to? No, I think we're good. Okay. Let's go. Whoops. Clip a little close there. Let's do these really quick. Well, not quickly, but as we go, fan back on, on we do. Okay. It's good that you care about this stuff. Most people are super lax about privacy invasion because they have nothing to hide. I always be, if they'd be okay with me walking in and going to the bathroom, right? It's um, the whole Internet of Things thing. While cool looking and seeming, you know, anybody you know who does a lot of tech work is like, nah, I'm good. I don't need that in my house. I don't, I don't need companies to know everything going on in exchange for a bit of convenience of being able to say, hey, Alexa, do this. I don't have any smart speakers or anything like that in my home. I don't think I have any smart devices in the house, to be honest. No, the smartest thing I have, and I'll admit, is um, my washer and dryer. And that is only because it is very convenient to have it say, hey, it's done, so I can go get it. When they get defensive, I ask them why. They don't do anything illegal, so there's nothing to hide. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So, yeah, I do have a, um, you know, smart washer and dryer. Um, but again, that is literally just for the convenience of being able to walk downstairs and say, hey, it's done. And I suppose I could figure out some way to um, to do that my, on my own. I could probably water, wire up some sort of a sound sensor or something that listened for the beep of the thing finishing and then have it send me a message. 
Have smart devices, but they're all local, no outside internet connection needed. Look into Home Assistant. I have looked into things like that. Um, sorry, I'm just... These are not getting quite the coverage that I want them to. And I think it's because of how small the pads are. No, that's okay. It just looked like it wasn't what I wanted it to be. No, that's not as bad as I thought it was. Okay. It's just the figure of the light. It's tricking me. Um, I have considered doing something like that. And uh, I actually have a whole house uh, alarm that is... Um, that I could wire into. All the wires are already run. So I've considered hooking up something like that uh, and messing around with it. Just haven't done it yet. Okay, there we go. Once again, it's, it's money and time. <laughs> As it is with many things. Okay, there we go. Come on. No, I don't want to do that. There we go. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. URLs are not permitted, but if you want to... Um, hmm. A solder picture. Okay, give me just a second. Let me see if I can temporarily enable them. One moment. Mm -mm. Uh, da -da -da, da -da, show messages. No, no, no. Oh, uh, shoot. Do you have Twitter by any chance? Or any other sort of um, thing like that? Because you could, you could tweet it to me and I would be able to check it later. Okay, yeah, those will look fun. Sorry, just a moment. I don't, I don't have it quite uh, on there at the moment. Give me just a second. I know I can do this. I just have to remember how. Um, no, no, no. No, no. No. There is a way to do this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'd, I'd have to dig through Twitch's settings and I, I don't have the um, ability to do that at the moment. But I will definitely, when this goes on YouTube later, you should be able to, to post a, a message to that. Whoops. All right, what am I doing? I'm doing this series now. Okay, so top to bottom. All of these uh, videos do end up on YouTube. There's a link to my YouTube if you are watching on the desktop version of Twitch. Or a browser version, I should say, desktop browser. You can see prior videos there. But yes, the, the link off thing is for my own safety. It's okay, I can help with mod settings if you need. By the way, asked how I found your Cananers. Oh, Cananers. Cananers is an absolutely awesome person and super supportive of everybody in her community. Um, yeah. If you actually, if you post it on Kananer's um, Discord and then at me in that Discord, I can see it there. That would probably be the fastest way. Or just direct message it to me on Discord as well, because if you saw my post message there, then you could uh, drop me a direct message on Discord. Also, okay, let's go get this in. The IT guy that sets up continues to support the Minecraft server. Nice. I have not joined their Minecraft server. I actually have, right above us, a, um, a Minecraft server running on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, not very powerful. It, it does just enough for uh, my family to play. And we don't, we don't really stress the heck out of it. But it's nice to have that locally. I am also an IT guy, so to speak. Don't mind me asking, are you just running vanilla Minecraft or you have it tweaked? Java and Bedrock. Oh, okay. Cool. I haven't messed around with Bedrock yet. Uh, I only really have um, set up Java servers. And I tend not to run any mods because it's just uh, a little taxing on the poor little computer. <laughs> it can't handle. Okay. Solder. Oh, 
All right, let's go ahead and do it. Hey Tech Life, welcome on in. I have Spigot uh, modded, but only server side. Okay, you can connect with the stock window. Got it. I've been tempted to mess around with uh, running a paper Minecraft server because I hear it's just lighter weight um, and may run a little bit better on the little pie. But I haven't, um, I've been hesitant because I hear that it's not like there, there are some weird things regarding compatibility with the client and I don't want to I don't want to have to fiddle with that, to be completely honest. I'd rather just work. <laughs> Not weird at all? Okay, cool. I do want to mess around more with the Bedrock server, though, simply because I like playing around with the ray tracing version of Minecraft. It looks really pretty. Microsoft has done a lot of awesome work on that version of the game, and I would like to play it some more, so. I may spend some time doing that at some point. Okay, we're really jamming along on these 10K resistors. Okay. That one, no, that one's fine. It's fine. These aren't close enough that they're gonna cause problems. I mean, for goodness sakes, it's okay. I use purper, so does Canada. Spigot, paper MC, purper MC. Each vision is more optimized. I actually went to college with the guy who makes purper MC. Okay. So purper is like super, super lightweight then? I want a Pi Zero 2, but I can't bring myself to spend 70 bucks. This is supposed to only be 15 bucks. Yeah, the, the Pi shortages and the whole mess going on with the Raspberry Pi Foundation right now is, well, exactly that. It's a mess. They, they kind of went overboard on their Twitter recently, and the community has not been happy with them. Understandably so. I just need to check, because that looks... Mm. I do not like how that looks. Hold on a second here. That looks a lot like those leads are touching, and I don't... I don't like it. Not one bit. I'm gonna put a little flux on this and then re-solder those. Hopefully I can clean that up. Great, now I have to think I have to look at the Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Man, I need a couple of Pi 4s. I feel you're like 200, 300, right? That's ridiculous. I got my, um, I have an eight gig Pi and I got it for 60, 75, only because I wanted the high amount of the RAM on it because it, it, it runs a Pi hole and the Minecraft server and I'm also running virtual tabletop on it. Um, so I don't want to, like, don't want to have to, come on, there we go, that's a lot of flux, probably too much, but whatever. I have a Pi 4 gig I have just sitting here, never used it because I have no clue what to do with it. Well, the first thing I would do with the Pi, if I were you, is I would go ahead and get an operating system on it of some type using an SD card. So that at least, you know, you, you can start playing with it. Um, that, whoops, I forgot to turn my fan on. Tried some spare PC water cooling, traded some spare PC water cooling fittings for it. Nice. But yes, my recommendation if, is if you just have a pie sitting around, the first most basic thing you can do with that pie is just uh, throw an SD card in it and get an operating system installed on an SD card. And the, the Raspberry Pi OS, um, does the job, you know? It's it's a derivative of Ubuntu. Or Debian, I should say. I don't think it's a derivative of Ubuntu, sorry. It's a derivative of derivative of Debian. And it it will do the job. You can of course install any operating system on the thing that you really want to, but the support for and the guides on how to do it for um, Raspberry Pi OS are just top notch and will get you through the entire process excuse me, without any major headaches. So 
I highly recommend it. Okay, let me take a look at this pick really quick here. On Discord, I do see your at sign there. Here we go. Which channel is it in? Talk Story Room. Let's take a look here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Cool. Um, oh, yeah. I'll probably, yeah. All of those look like the okay ones. So I'm not having any problems with insufficient wetting at all. Yeah, cool. Those look great. Thank you for verifying. I appreciate it. So, yeah, first thing I would do is grab, like, uh, you only need maybe SD memory cards or micro SD cards are so cheap these days. I just got a 512 gig SD memory card for 40 bucks um, because it was on sale. Usually they run closer to 100. And I was kind of surprised that I got the deal on it that I did. Um, but they are not expensive. And so just get one that, you know, is good enough for hobby work. 128 gig would be more than enough. That's what I used. Um, yeah, perfect. If you have a 128 gig in there, that's that's exactly what you need. Uh, you will want to download the Raspberry Pi OS installer. Hey, Charlie Boy, just a second. I will let you know. Um, you want to download the Raspberry Pi installer uh, from the Raspberry Pi's uh, foundation's website and then just throw that sd card in there run the installer and install the os on it and you you'll be good to go 400 gigs for 25 each nice and what i'm doing right now charlie is we are soldering um some projects here i'm building a logic board that is going to display the idea of how um, logic circuits work using some transistors and uh, some leds and we're building it using this kit that we have here. It's been something I've been working on for the past couple weekends. It's just doing some soldering stuff to wrap out the year. And I'm practicing my soldering at the same time. Because uh, it's something that I have not... Uh, it's something I'm learning how to do. Um, it's definitely not something I am by any means any sort of an expert at yet. Uh, I'm still learning. But I, I think that I do fairly okay at it. Uh, well enough to, to build little projects like this anyway. I just let my tools at work build the logic chips. Yeah, well, you work on processors, dude, so you have it easier. By the way, for those who don't know, um, Charlie, it, Charlie Boy 808 here uh, works at Intel and uh, does fab work. So he's he's got the beefy equipment to work with. <laughs> he has got it much easier than us plebs here assembling and soldering uh, resistors by hand. <laughs> Okay, I think that's good. Let's do those two sets sets really quick here, since we're right there. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, cool. You're a sysad for NASA? Very nice. My tristers are like seven nanometers. Yeah, you can't do that by hand. Well, I mean, you probably could using some sort of tooling to help you do it by hand, but I wouldn't ever want to. NASA seems like it'd be a really cool place to work. Um, just everything that they do. Seems like it'd be really interesting. Maybe I can get a, a apply for a job there doing VR work or something. That'd be that would be fun. All right, let's concentrate on the soldering now for a few moments here. Quick tad. Oops. Get into the joint, please. Thank you. Okay, there we go. So, I mean, hey, don't worry. Everybody uses whatever computer components they want. I mean, I've got both in my household. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Healthy competition is, is a good thing. Of course, now Charlie's going to ban me from our Discord, and uh, I will no longer be able to do anything. <laughs> Exactly. Competition breeds advancement. Intel wouldn't be innovating if AMD wasn't pushing them and vice versa, you know? They would just sit on their butts and be happy to sell processors as they exist. Oh, this is a little tricky just because of the angles here. Uh, you know what would make this way easier? Hold on just a sec. If 
I was smart, I did it this way, because then I can get at the resistors more vertically, sort of, sort of. Yeah, that works. That's a lot easier. I face palm my losses in paychecks and stock prices. I have friends who work at PayPal. They have not had a good year. Um, and yeah, <laughs> it's been rough. Oh yeah, that's a lot easier to get it. Perfect. Okay. I was thinking of buying a 13900 to use as a heater. <laughs> It'll save you money if you get, oh gosh. We're just zooming along here. Cool. Let's take a look at these and make sure that they all look clean. Yeah, those look great. Okay, we'll go ahead and clip those leads. Start from over here, I guess. Okay. It seems like all the tech stuff getting the shaft this year for some reason. Yeah, global shortage of supplies, people underestimating the pandemic. Everyone in the interest would be recovering for a while. Yeah, I don't I wouldn't be surprised if this is ongoing for, for multiple years. I have a friend who works in logistics and shipping and yeah, it's it's been a mess, to put it lightly. Whoops, come on. Get over here. There we go. Don't fall on my pile of other things, thank you. I thought of taking all these leads that I'm clipping, and I've saved all of them, and just building some sort of a funky sculpture that lights, lights up when you connect power to it. That'd be pretty fun. All right. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. That's all fine. Cool. Okay, I'm flipping it back over. Next set of resistors. Let's go. My ref is still locked, rocking the 9900. That was a beast. It's like the GTX 1080 of its time, really. I'm still using an 8700 with the 3090. The RTX is doing most of the work. I have an AMD processor in my build, and uh, I'm running a 2080 at the moment. I would have still been running a 1080, um, but it went and died on me and had some issues. And I got it kind of working, but it, the, I mean, the writing was on the wall. It wasn't going to last forever. So I jumped to a 2080, and this was right at the start of the pandemic, um, right around that time period. And I was wrapping up my master's, and I couldn't not have a GPU. So this is late 2019, right before that. And so I ended up jumping to a 2080, and it's been running on that ever since. It does the job. It's not amazing. Um, but, you know, I avoided being scalped on a 3080 or something. A Ryzen 59. Yeah, I have a, a 3700, I think. My, my build is getting a little long in the teeth. But it's still working, and I'm going to run it into the ground just like I do with every single other computer build that I have. I tend to build computers and try to make them last for at least five-plus years. Um, because... In that time span, technology is advanced enough and things are, are different enough that I feel like I'm getting real advancement out of my out of my builds. And so um, yeah, I try to make them last as long as I possibly can. All right. We're just going to get these last few components in here, and then we'll solder them all, and we'll be done with the resistors, thankfully. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's difficult to time pricing on things. Okay. These leads are going to be all over the place, but the resistors are just about done here, so that's a good thing. All right. And typically when I do these projects, I try to do all the components that are sitting closest to the board first so that if I need to lay things down, it's easy to do. So the next components we're going to be doing are the push button switches here. But for now, let's go ahead and uh, solder these resistors on and get that part done. Okay, cool. How many gates is this logic board? Um, like... Can, can you see, you, I think you can see the pile of, of transistors that I have sitting here. So probably 15-ish, maybe? Oh, yeah, sorry, that's, uh, that's how it goes. Okay. Uh huh. You might have some sort of an ad blocking or other thing going on or you've signed up for some service that just doesn't play them. Which is possible to do with Twitch. I believe there's a, a way you can not have ads ever. Twitch Turbo, yeah. Oh, you don't have that. Well, then I am not sure. No ad blockers? Well, maybe you are the chosen one. <laughs> Hold on, man. There we go. The chosen one who never sees the ads is free from the dregs of the internet. There we go. It's okay, it's helping the homie out. You know, there's some of them are pretty good. I wouldn't know. I don't, I don't get to see them. <laughs> That's the next step for Twitch, yeah. Okay. Forcing the streamer to see the ads to continue. Oh, God. Drink verification soda to continue. <laughs> if you haven't heard that joke before, I, I highly recommend looking it up. It's a pretty funny one. And kind of horrific. Welcome back, Charlie Boy. So, yes, um, I have a number of transistors in this pile over here, about 15-ish, maybe. Um, so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of uh, transistors, and I'm not sure if they're PNP or NPM um, transistors. How many logic gates altogether? I think if you give me a minute when I finish uh, soldering this, I can, I can tell you, because it does actually show you how many total. Okay, these leads are actually getting in the way. I might want to clip them off here. There we go. I always love it when I get the little splashes on my skin. It's like, ouch, that's a surprise. Okay. Okay, let me check my work really quick here. 
Make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, that all looks clean to me. All right, we'll go ahead and cut these leads. Snippity snip snip goes all the stuff. Oh gosh, this is all over the place. Okay, there we go. There and right there. Whoops, I think I've done all the left facing ones. So let's do the right facing ones. There we go. That's a little close together. I'm going to have to take a closer look at that. Oh, that looks okay. Shouldn't be touching. Okay. All done on that. Cool. Um, so yes, the logic gates that this is meant to um, show, we've got an AND gate, an OR gate, an XOR gate, a NAND gate, a NOR gate, and an XNOR gate, and then finally just a simple NOTTER. So a uh, number of, of, you know, complex things going on here. Uh, most complex, of course, are the XOR and the XNOR gates, um, but then across the top, AND OR NOT. Nor NAND, uh, and then XNOR, or XOR, and then XNOR, and then just an AB on at the bottom to show you when something has power. All right, let's go ahead and uh, move this out of the way really quick here, and we're going to put the button switches in now. These usually just snap in pretty easily without any real hassle. Oops, if I don't drop them all over the place, that is. Yeah, no problem there. And then they solder in pretty quick too. Okay, cool. Got those in. Let's go ahead and uh, get those pins soldered. Oops. Okie dokie. On we go. I definitely think one of the things I'm going to need to get is some sort of a wheel for feeding my solder because this is really annoying having it sit on the ground here and I'm like oh come on get over here Yeah, it's really cool. Um, you can get these kits. There's a, a fun little company called eLearnTronics. Um, I am not sponsored or associated with them in any way. I just like their stuff. I should get it work for people who don't get what we do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, let me. Just, I'll throw the link in chat for you here in a moment, or I'll put it in Discord a little later. Um, but they have a whole number of different kits that... Um, that I've been working on the display concepts like um, resistance, capacitance, all that kind of stuff. Let me let me just grab these really quick here since we're talking about it. Um, no, that one has to do with parallel circuits. Uh, da -da -da. This is the capacitance kit, I think. Yeah, that's capacitance. That's the multiplexer. Here's the one I really wanted to, to show, though, is the resistance kit. So this I assembled um, a couple weeks ago. And it essentially shows you, uh, sorry, I've got stacks and stacks of junk over here. Okay, so I'll plug it in here really quick and uh, turn it on. And I'll turn off my overhead so you can actually see the components and everything really quick. There we go. All right, and if I turn it on, you can see, um, you know, resistance. It shows you essentially how each of these resistors uh, work. 
from you know very little resistance to very high resistance and how that differs and changes the way that everything works and i think if i move this a little closer you can kind of see the the content on the board here a bit easier um but yeah that's these are the people who make these kits uh i really appreciate their work it makes the electronics easy to understand and see um and it's a good way to practice soldering in my opinion so that's why i uh you know decided to get these kits or basically receive them as a gift so that i can practice this sort of thing and there's one for uh, capacitance, one for resistance, one for if you do circuits in series or parallel for um, capacitors or resistors, all that kind of stuff. Don't think I actually need to clip the leads on these because they're so teeny. Yeah, we're good there. Okay, next I think uh, is what's going to be higher, the transistors or the LEDs? Oh, no, we should do the, the dipole switch next because that's really simple and in the corner here. We actually do want to set this uh, down over here so that I can easily solder this without it wiggling around. I'll move that out of the way temporarily. Okay. No, I don't want this to be tilted. That's the problem I had with them previously, is that it ended up tilted. There we go. And if I just get one of these... ...in place like that... Let's make sure this isn't, like, wonky. Okay, yeah, that's solidly on there. Perfect. Tack it in place with one and then do the rest. Just right. No, that's getting a little, hold on. <laughs> Getting some not so great results there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to apply some flux to that and clean it up. Okay, got kind of a cold joint. All right, let's. Yeah, that's a mess. Okay. Uh, if I, yeah, just put a little bit of flux on it, should be fine. Then I can clean the solder off. Yay, go ahead, get fluxed up. There. Actually, I think I'm just going to go ahead and desolder this whole thing. Hold on a sec. That's kind of messy. <laughs> that was smooth. Don't touch the solder to your skin, kids. It's a bad idea, okay? Okay, that's much cleaner. Perfect. I'm okay. All right. Uh, yeah, now I should be able to just re-solder that one. And we'll apply flux ahead of time this time, just so that it's nice and clean. Perfect.
this one really just doesn't want to doesn't want to do it. I don't know why. The joint is still clean, but looks kind of like a mess. I am not happy with that one at all. Okay, well, one more time here, and I'm going to make sure that my, my tip is nice and pre-soldered. So I really don't know why this one's being so problematic. Make sure that heat is well applied to both components, and it is. There we go. That's a lot cleaner. Okay. That one's just being stubborn. I don't know why it was being so stubborn, but it is now bound on there. Okay, great. So we've got our on-off switch attached. And the question is, which one of these items should be next? Is the Transistor or the LED is going to sit higher, and I think it's going to be the LEDs, although let's put a transistor in and see how high off the board it's going to sit. No, wrong way. And then let's put an LED in for comparison. Yeah, that way. Anode and cathode. All right. Um, okay, the transistors are going to sit a little bit lower, so we'll do the transistors first. <clears throat> Let me bring my helping hands back in. And we're going to do these transistors one at a time, because they're a little different, uh, and I don't know if I can really bend the leads all that much to get, keep them from falling out. I don't know. There we go, that's not going anywhere. It's not gonna look perfect and that's okay by me. Okay. Nothing terribly different here, it's just a different component with uh, more parts on it. Okay, yeah, that looks clean and happy. Okay, cool. Clip those leads and move them right along. And we gotta do a lot more of these, so maybe we can do a few at a time.
Yep, that looks good to me. Okay. Cool. Next transistor in. And we're going to start on this side and move our weight that way instead, I think. Well, this one just kind of fell right in. Okay. Oops. Come. There we go. Hey, Awful, how's it going? Welcome on in. We're doing some electronic soldering work this evening, which means I am learning and failing and learning from failure, <laughs> essentially. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure that these look good, and they do indeed look good. And these aren't going to look perfect on top, and that's okay. They don't need to. As long as all the components are in there, in the end, that's all that really matters. Okay. Come on, trimmers, get in there. Okay, great. Next, we're at the, the kind of uh, boring assembly and soldering part at this point, but we're finally on the last sets of components. Uh, once I get the transistors done, then the LEDs go in and we're finished with this kit, which I should be able to do uh, in a timely manner here based on how we're just kind of moving along. So we're gonna keep going. Maybe I can do a couple of these at once. Mm, I feel like that's going to get in the way. We'll do one over here on the end so that I can work on it at the same time there. Just make sure the orientation is correct. Yes, yes. Good. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's get these in. Oh, I see what's going on. I'll have to fix that later. All right, in we go. Cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those all look good. Nice flush soldering going on here. Okay. doing sciences okay and last one all right yes perfect all right, four down and many, 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 many more to go. Oh my goodness, okay. Mm. 
It's a good thing I reserved an entire day for this particular project because I had a feeling it was going to take a while. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yes. Right there. Thank you. Oh, hello, Mr. Horologist. And the party of 62. Welcome in, everybody. And thank you so much for sending your community my way. How is your day going, everyone? I hope you're having a good time. My name is Patrick. I am a streamer out of Hawaii. And today we're just doing a little project on a kit um, that I'm putting together. I'm doing some soldering work on this fun little project um, that I'm practicing with on logic gates, which is uh, going to end up looking somewhat like this little guy right here in the end. So we're about, uh, I'd say about 60 to 70% done with all the soldering work, putting everything together. And hopefully we can get this done here on stream today and we'll see it actually in work. Thank you so much for the follow, kepjr 54 And I'm just gonna keep on working at this because I want to get it done. And But I, while I'm working on it, I'm curious uh, where you come from and um, why you brought your community over, which again, thank you so much for doing so. All right, let's get going. Cool, cool, cool. And I do apologize if there's a little bit of lag on the stream uh, from when you say something and when I respond because I'm in the middle of the ocean. Sometimes there's a little bit of that. Come from the internets, welcome. The internets are awesome most of the time. And welcome to my little corner of it. I like the internets for the most part. Okay, there we go. <laughs> We're talking about electronics and watches. Okay, cool. I really like watching pardon the pun, um, watch assembly videos, like people putting watches, taking watches apart and cleaning them and putting them back together. I find it absolutely fascinating. California, okay, awesome. There we go. That was starting to bug me, that thing getting, getting pushed up. Okay. And so, uh, like I said, we're working on, on this whole project here. I've got all the resistors in, uh, all over the board and I've got my two push button switches, my on off switch, and I'm currently putting in the transistors, um, which I'm working my way across here. And then once the transistors are done, I've got to put all these LEDs in and then we're done. That's what you do. Okay, cool. This is something I'm learning. Um, I will be completely honest. I'm a novice at this. Uh, it is something that I was always curious to try out. And so uh, over the past year and a half or so, um, some friends have gotten me a soldering iron and I've gotten myself some little kits to practice with. And so I've been, you know, just picking it up as I go, learning how uh, to do these sorts of things. Uh, my next major project that I'm going to be working on is a um, Bluetooth speaker kit, which is uh, just kind of, you know, all the parts come in a box. You put the whole thing together, the board's already ready to go. Um, so that's going to be like the big project once I get to it. But we're working our way up to it, so I'm pretty excited for that uh, once we get there. Let me just make sure that all of these look good really quick. Yeah, that's solid. Okay, two more transistors go in. I'm going to bend these leads here. One of these days, I'm going to have enough of a setup here, because right now the only component, uh, the only thing that I really have to do this with in terms of the stream is uh, my phone. And so hopefully one day I will have enough resources where I can actually set up more of a, a microscope so you can actually see what's going on in greater detail. And uh, that would be really cool if I was able to one day do that. So we're, we're working our way up to that. Okay, cool. Those are bent, and let me just make sure the transistors are in the correct orientation, because that would be really sad if I had to desolder a whole thing. Okay, here we go. And you are hitting an ad roll. I apologize. It's going to hit every 45 minutes or so. But I appreciate you bringing your community over so much. All 
All right, let's see. Okay, great. I want to check this one because it looked a little funky when I was doing it, but no, it looks fine. Okay, cool. Let's clip these leads. <clears throat> No cold joints here, sir. Not allowed. All right, cool. Okay, now we're ready to start on these lower components. So let's get this one done first here. I think I can do like a couple of these at once. Pox upon cold joints, indeed. I have run into very few of them, fortunately. Um, I've been pretty good about making sure that everything is, is happy and not causing me any problems in that regard. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Let's do this one over here. Pox upon cold joints, sir. Uh, pox upon them. All right. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and solder these components in. Actually, we're going to do this this way because it's just a little easier to get the soldering iron if I come in from that side. All right. All right, you all should be out of the ad roll. Welcome back. And so, um, this is only like my what, sixth sixth major project that I've soldered. Regarding these helping hands, something I found really handy for my adventures taking the arms and mounting them to a dial indicator stand for machining. Oh, interesting. I may have to try that at some point because it's heavy, adjustable, and you can magically lock it to things. Yeah. These are great tips. Thank you so much for sharing that. I am, I am still learning, and so the more that I can learn the better I can get at this over time. All right. I work on amplifiers, audio gear, so magnetically clamping my helping hands into a chassis makes it nice to hold on to stuff. Perfect. I would like to be able to fix my, old head my own headphones at some point. I have worked with audio gear. But I'm not quite that advanced, I think. <laughs> not yet. One day. Whoops. Yeah, Charlie does a lot of audio work as well. You two would definitely get some chatting. Spent a lot of time working on how to make the next dozen times I have to fix something easier. Yes, 
It's all in the name of laziness in the end. Okay, just gotta make sure I heat the right component here. There we go. Perfect. All right, last radio I worked on was a 1941 Westinghouse. Nice. That's some classic stuff there. All right, that, uh, okay, no, that's okay. Okay, these are fine. I'm gonna go ahead and clip these. <clears throat> the angle on this is kind of awkward okay there we go I have so many little leads on the board now that I'm, I'm having a hard time differentiating everything <laughs> I need a, I need like a spotlight so I can more easily keep track of things okay So here's, a, here's an interesting one I had in mind recently was my TV, like the right, maybe, excuse me, six rows of pixels on the right-hand side of the TV don't show anything anymore. And I'm willing to bet it's because something inside on the logic board just like isn't working correctly anymore. And if I were to reflow it somehow, it would probably start working again. And so I've considered like disassembling my television and doing that, it's well past its warranty. It's old. It's like a 10-year-old TV at this point. But, you know, why throw something away if I can fix it? So that's that's like an interesting project I've been thinking about um, trying out. Okay, that's good. Four FM radio station, new control boards. Oh, gosh, you guys are talking radio. Now I'm not going to be able to keep up. <laughs> Let's not do. Let's make sure this is correctly oriented. No. I never, of course, the number one source of failure on TVs that age is the capacitors getting flaky. Okay. So if I just bought the, oh, I just realized that transistor's upside down. I'm going to have to desolder one of these. And I already clipped the leads on it too. Son of a gun. Okay, well, that's fine. Making mistakes is part of the game. So let's go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and solder these two that I'm putting in, and then we got to desolder this one and flip it around and put it back in. That's fine. I have the stuff for it. So it's the first time I've done it. So it happens, you know. <laughs> we can fix it. I am confident. I have the tools. I have the, the capacity to do it. Just got to do it. All right. Never. Nobody ever makes mistakes. It's okay. Mistakes are an opportunity to learn. And the learning right now is that I need to slow down just a little bit and pay more attention to what I'm doing. So it'll be fine. All right, let's go ahead and get these guys in here. Hmm. Um, ah, hold on. Overhead's got to turn back on. There we go. 
Mm. No, I need to get on the component. There we go. Thank you. Okay, we're good. And the orientation is correct on all of these, right? <laughs> now I'm like double making sure on everything. All right, let's go ahead and clip those leads. And then we'll go back and fix our mistake. Really quick here. Oops. A little bit too much solder on that one, but that's okay. All right, where is my problem child? Um, it's this one all the way on the right over here. So it is this set of components right here, right there. So we're gonna uh, flux that up a bit. Uh, we're not going to, it's, it's not gonna be that bad. I have, I can fix this, all right. I'm going to flux this up and we're going to bring our good all soldering braid in here. We're going to fix this. All right. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, it looks like my bit rate like tanked for a second there. Sorry. Let me just take a look at things. Yeah, it looks okay. I think I just had a hiccup. Everything okay? I love it when the braid actually gets stuck on the board. Okay. That is trash. It's a fresh braid here. Hey, how's it going, Purple Cow? Welcome on in. Okay, thank you for the confirmation. We are building a kit um, that is supposed to teach us how uh, logic gates work. But the problem is, is that I accidentally put in one of my transistors upside down. So I am desoldering it right now to remove it. and flip it over and hopefully I can actually do this correctly. Okay. I'm going to get some tweezers out here so I can just gently bend these things really quick. Uh, whoops, why is that not on my... Oh, the component is still soldered from the other side. Maybe I can just heat it and and remove it. Hold on a second here. So we're basically fixing a mistake at the moment. <laughs> Thank you also for the follow, DCS13. Mistakes were made, as they say. Uh, so we're going to try and <laughs> if 
fix this. Sometimes a soldier sucker is the way to go with these. Unfortunately, I don't have one. So I'm making do with, with what I do have at the moment. be able to get some more. okay yeah good that did drive some of the um, solder through to the other side so let me reflux this yeah I've, I've I've heard comments of such um, but I, I am a little limited on the tools that I can get here unfortunately a lot of places don't ship to Hawaii and so getting components can be tricky solder suckers can but other things not so much um, like even just getting this flux pen was kind of a pain in the butt Come on. Right, the problem is is that no one will ship liquid flux here. You you literally cannot get it. Um, so I have to I have to make do with you know what I can get. And uh, so I have limited resources. Hold on. It is considered a combustible thing, and so I literally cannot uh, get it, you know. It's just kind of the way it is. All right, let's uh, bend this back a bit, huh? There we go, that's good. Okay, so at least those are straightened out now. So if I can, um, I can just desolder those two sides, I should be good. Maybe if I do this, I'm going to try something here. Tube of paste. Yeah, I, I have this flux pen, which I was able to get. One local company carries it, and that's all they carry. I also have some rosin paste here, which I might actually use in a moment here, because um, if it lets me, if it lets me get the rosin to where I want it to be on this, so I can get it out, uh, that might work a little better. Otherwise, trust me, I, I wish that I had access to all the tools that I actually needed. <laughs> it's not that simple, unfortunately. Okay, let's try this. Welcome in, Pack Trick. <laughs> Love the name. All right, yeah, we just need to get a little bit more out of there. Just a teeniest bit more. So close. Okay, and let's clip this off and try this and unfortunately my my phone is on a limited battery so we might unexpectedly cut out at some point and I do apologize for that I am working with the tools that I have available to me and those tools are not 100% on all the time so doing the best I can with what I have and I appreciate your patience all right let's see if we can do this
There we go. I think that worked. All right, let's get this other side here really quick. Still really stuck in there. Bummer, dude. Yeah, I can still see a teeny bit of flux in the uh, in the component. Maybe if we try and do it from this side. It's just such a tiny amount at this point. It's almost out of there. Instead of trying to rotate that, why don't I rotate myself? There we go. Did we get it? Can you hold the transistor and heat the pads from the back? I might be able to. Um, if I can, if I can just wiggle it loose. My my only concern, well, if I, let me try this. If I stand the whole thing up and kind of clamp it in place vertically like this, um, that'll hold it in place. And then if I can just wiggle it loose using this, maybe. The problem is, is it's got three um, three elements on it, and so I got to get all three loose in order to, to really get it out. So that's that's the difficulty I'm having right now is getting all three because I've got nearly all the dang. Oh. I just see a little bit more on the right side there. It's okay, folks. This is a part of a learning process. It's being very stubborn. I've walked a part off the board by pulling on one side while we're flowing and then pulling the other way. Yeah, I might end up having to do that. Um, my only worry is that I'm not able to like reuse the component at all because I don't exactly have spares. <laughs> So we're we're gonna try and get as much out of this as we can. Oh, it would probably also help if I had good conductance on my soldering tip. <laughs> there we go. I could, yeah, um, <clears throat> if I can somehow do that, I do have a different tip um, that's more like a chisel, and that might work. Yeah, I feel like it's just bending. It's not really coming out. 
Ups. Yeah, I can still see the teeny bit of molten solder in there. It's just barely holding on. All right. Unfortunately, I am out of time for stream to today. For today, so what we're going to have to do is um, I'm going to have to wrap it here, and I'm going to try and get this component desoldered uh, later and see if I can't fix it then. Uh, it may take me a little bit longer to poke at this, but I should be able to get it done. And once that is wrapped up and working, um, hopefully then I can come back and do the rest of the components and wrap this board up. Yeah, it is a bit of a cliffhanger, I know, but thank you all so much for coming in, whether or not you joined in from another person's stream or you just happened on by. And thank you again to the people who raided Mr. Horologist. It's very nice of you to bring your community over to support me. I will be back this Tuesday to do my random game night with friends. And then I may not be back the following Sunday to wrap this up, but I'm going to try to be. I have family coming over. Um, but we hopefully can wrap up this next week Sunday and get it all pal. So thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and as always, aloha. And please do stick around. We're going to throw a raid out to one of our fellow Twitch Hawaii streamers. Let's see who's streaming out there in Streamland right now. I'm going to take a quick glance here. And see who's doing what. Uh, we have a lot of friends streaming at the moment. Let's send some love over to... Uh, let's see here. Send some love over to Sushi. Sushi is an absolute sweetheart. You should give her your love and support when we get over there. She's a VTuber. She's doing an ASMR stream, so it'd be a nice way to wind down your evening. Just kind of relax and enjoy the, the sound. Thank you all again so much for stopping by, for joining me for the stream. I'm sorry we ended up on a bit of a rough spot at the end there. Thank you also for Purple Cow 24 and 3D Beer Goggles, which I love your name, for following. Until next time, like I said, take care, stay safe. Aloha.